This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. All of the time when we're talking about serving the Creator, so most of us are too scared and afraid really to go with their inner flame, with their inner faith. And they're choosing, they choose to be religious instead of serving the Creator. What? What am I saying? It's very easy um, to ask someone else to tell you what to do, than to have to choose your own choices and to be your, your to, to, take, to take risks in life and to be who that you are. Now, I'm trying many times in my lectures, in my classes, in my conversations with people, with friends, to explain the importance of being yourself and going out and, and, and not holding back your thoughts and your emotions and your feelings and, and never to, to hold yourself back from fighting for the poor and to go. And it sounds a little bit like a, a rebellion, like, a, like, a, like that I'm trying to make a, a change, a move here in the world. But the truth is that I'm all of the time still holding back very much. And I must say that in my private life, I'm not holding back. For you, I have mercy, because I understand that people are fragile, but yesterday I did tshuva on that, because let's say that you find a solution, and you realize that that solution can work. Okay, great, that's the tool, that's the weapon. It can work. Now, for yourself, you're using it. Why? Because you believe in yourself that you have the tools, that you have the ability to go all the way with it. So you go, you do. But then someone else is asking you, can you please give me an advice? Can you tell me what should I do? What can I do? And you have mercy on him, and then you don't give him the tools. Because you have mercy on him, it's wrong. It's not right. It's some kind of lack of faith in you guys that I have, maybe. So on that I am doing tshuva. Not to give you everything I know, because I'm afraid that it can be too hard for you to deal with it. But why that I will judge you like that, that you won't be able to deal with my wisdom? Am I wiser than you? Am I stronger than you? I'm not. I'm just a regular person like that you are. If I achieved amazing things, then I know that today I have some very huge powers and, and I understand that today I can deal with some big, big issues that are happening to me in my life. Why that I'm going to spare that wisdom from you? Why that I'll judge you in that way to come to conclusions like you cannot achieve those things? It's wrong. For my side, I'm wrong. So on that I did tshuva. Now, I have a friend that called me a few days ago with such hard issues of, 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 of money, doesn't know how to finish the month. And I know so many people that if you will ask them about money, they will tell you the same. Every month until the last day of the month, I'm struggling, I'm collecting another 200, another 100, another 50, 150 to cover my expenses, to pay the rent, until the last moment, every time, every week, students of mine are calling and sending messages, and I don't know what to do. But the truth is that we all experienced already such huge miracles about money. And every time that we saw those wonders, and suddenly we had that amount that we needed, even if we had to, to scrub the floors for it, even if we had to break our fingernails for that, in the end, the money came and we saw that it was supervised by the Creator. So we saw Hashem's individual supervision on our lives. We saw how that Hashem in Barach brought that, that precise amount that was needed for us in that moment. And it happened to us so many times in our lives. So how come every time we're falling Again, to that lack of faith. Again, we're doubting the Creator. Every month again, we're doubting the Creator before the end of the month. And that's one thing. In another, on another 
um, another example a person can find the creator in his life that he is rebuking him that the creator is telling him sending him messages on his behavior on respect for other people on 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 his generosity on charity on many issues on many topics in his life and the person is waking up to see the supervision of the Creator rebuking him on certain things that he himself knows about himself, that he is weak about those things, in those things. And that rebuke actually comes in the right spot, in the right place, and he is learning and he's accepting it. So once in a while we are receiving that wisdom and we are aware to the existence of the Creator and we can recognize Him and see Him in our lives and we're saying to ourselves in those moments after receiving that rebuke, after seeing, experiencing the Creator's presence in our life, we're saying to ourselves, okay, I'm going to be about Shuva right now. From now on, I'm going to work on my attributes. I'm not going to lie anymore. She was right. He was right. I'm doing Shuva. I'm going all the way with that. And then you feel, okay, now I'm on the path because Hashem is always talking. Hashem is always revealing. So now I'm going to succeed. Now I'm going to make it. And then after one day or one hour or one snack or one, one cup of soda, and you lose your mind again. And again you're being insulted and you reject the rebuke of Hashem and you don't want to hear. And suddenly it becomes to be too much all of those rebukes and all of those messages. And you start denying again and you're falling from that level. Even though that one hour ago you were standing in such a place that you were learning from, from every word, from every letter, from every comma, from, from every vowel that Hashem was speaking to you, you would grab it and you would learn from it. You saw Hashem eye in eye, eye to eye, you saw Hashem. And then you reject it again. And those things happen to us on health issues praying for other people and saw wonders and miracles and we prayed for that woman and we prayed for that person and we prayed for a ticket to Uman and we prayed for something unique to do, to make an event, to do something big. And we saw wonders. And again and again, we are falling from that faith, from that strong and solid faith that is in the level of, of, of the prophets, of the real righteous people from different generations. From ancient times, we once in a while are holding in the heights of the world, understanding the real existence of the Creator while learning Torah, while making it with Bode Duyot, while, while keeping Shabbat, doing whatever. We see the Creator and then we're falling back to our laziness, to our selfish, selfishness. I'm making up again and again. Yeah, it's, it's flowing. Everyone are flowing with my gibberish, English, Hebrewish. Trying and falling again and falling again and falling again. So, about myself, I know to tell you that I'm being very, very strong on myself never to move and to allow myself to lie to myself, even in the tiniest things of them all. I'm not letting no information pass through me without taking it as much as I can. And every time that I'm standing in the test that I am scared, that I am afraid, that I want to fall for my faith, that I want to count on people, that I want to make a phone call to someone and to ask him to help me somehow, that I have my desires, that I have my confusions, my solution, and it's a violent solution, it's a painful solution. What that I'm doing to myself is that I'm turning 180 degrees from that side and walking radically to the opposite, to the other side. It means that if I'm scared what's going to happen with me financially tomorrow, so today I'm not going to do anything to make money. That's what I'm doing. If I see that my lusts, my desires are waking up, 
So I'm going to break my desires to the radical side, to the other side completely, and not going to give it a second to beat me, to eat me, to destroy me. And only why? Because that I cannot allow myself to forget the Creator's existence in the world after that He made that huge favor with me to uncover His godliness and His greatness in the world so many times. It's such a shame when, and again, look how careful I am with you, not talking to you and not rebuking you and not telling you a word because I'm scared for you. I don't want you to fall into negative thoughts about yourselves. Why am I giving up on myself? In Breslev, it's a, it's a known thing that people thinking to themselves like you should always go only with good points and positive thoughts and only gratitude. If you would know how Rabbi Nachman of Breslev was breaking his own bones, torturing himself never to sin, never to sin, never to lie, Never, ever, ever to let go from the path of righteousness, of holiness, of purity. You would be scared to mention the name Rabbi Nachman of Weslev. Those people, the real righteous people, are people that have real fear from heaven. Fear from heaven is admiration, is complete love. It's a flaming fire flaming pillar of fire that lives inside of their hearts and they're not ignoring it. They're not letting the fire of the flaming world that is surrounding them to cover and to block the holiness and the purity of their hearts. And they're ready to sacrifice themselves and to throw themselves to the fire and to the water for the respect and honor of the Creator. Like Esther the Queen. Esther the queen, she was ready, Esther Amalka, to throw herself into the palace of Achashverosh. Achashverosh was a foreign king, was a non-Jew king with no manners. He was not polite, he was not nice. He was wrapped and trapped in all kinds of sick, sick lusts and desires. He didn't care about his ex-wife. He was ready to kill her. He was not caring about people in his kingship. He was signing documents to execute all the Jewish nation in one minute. We're talking about a vicious, cruel king with all passions and filthy lusts that all from all of the most beautiful women in the world he would choose and pick who would be that one that would be great and beautiful and gorgeous enough for him and then he would send her to that beauty salon saloon for a month to to be soaked in perfume and 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 and, and smells and creams to we're talking about sick person and that holy righteous woman she is sending herself, she's forcing herself, allowing herself to go and to risk herself by being married to him. To destroy every kind of connection that she had with purity, with holiness. She's throwing herself into the lion's den, risking all of her purity, all of her innocence, all of her, all of her, all of her holiness. For what? for a noble cause, for something that she sees in her mind that is important, that she sees that she can make a change with that. Moshe Rabbeinu, he can send himself into a flaming fire with boulders that are falling down from the, from the peak of that mountain, and he is walking into the darkness, into the thunders, into the fire, into the fog, into loud voices that never been heard before. And he's going with no backpack, with no water, with no bread, with no preparation. He forgot his iPhone. He didn't took anything with him. And he's walking into the fire, ready to go and to do what a man's got to do without thinking, risking. And then he's going into the fire, 
And he's standing in front of angels that are made of the flaming fire of, 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 of the Creator. We're talking about creations that no human being is able to stand in front of them. And Hashem is telling Moshe, you should answer them why you deserve to take the Torah, why you deserve to take to carry the holy tablets and to bring them down to the world. And Moshe Rabbeinu is answering Hashem, he's telling him, listen, how I'm going to answer them? How I'm going to argue with them? They can f- kill me, burn me with their breath. They're going to destroy me. Hashem is telling him, Hold my throne of honor and answer them. And then Moshe Rabbeinu, he is doing it. He's going for his nation. He's going for his truth. He's going for the inner understanding that lives in the back of his own mind. Nothing that he been commanded. (coughs) The Midrash is saying, the Gemara is telling us that Moshe Rabbeinu was arguing and fighting with the Creator on on the Torah. That the Creator himself was not ready to hand the Bible to his nation, to the world yet. And Moshe Rabbeinu went to argue with Hashem and to fight and to wrestle with Hashem. And Hashem is holding the tablets from one side and Moshe Rabbeinu is holding the tablets from the other side. And then it's written, Gavar kocho shel Moshe. Moshe overpowered on Hashem. What? What are we talking about? We're talking about a person, flesh and bones, a regular human being that is risking every part of his life is ready to, to, to execute himself, to erase himself from the book of, of, of all books. He's saying to Hashem Barach, kill me now if you're not forgiving them like I'm asking you. Kill me now. Those are the real righteous people. Those are people that are going against the stream. Those are people that are ready to to risk themselves completely. Without considerations, without preparations, without thinking so hard, without going to the rabbi and asking them what to do and if to do and if not to do. I remember myself maybe six years ago, I went to my rabbi, to Rav Shalom Arush in Yeshiva in Jerusalem. I went to him, I asked him, I told him, Rav, I want to ask you one last question. He said, yes. I told him, is it true that from all the 12 years that I was sitting in front of you in classes, and I was one of your most important helpers, and I did so much for you during those 12 years that I was your student, Is it true that the conclusion of everything that you taught me was that I need to go out and to bring all of the people back to Hashem, all Bnei Olam, that all the children of the world will believe in the Creator? So he answered to me, yes. So I told him, so now I'm going to do it even if you're going to tell me to stop. Because when you realize that something is right, You need to go all the way with it and to drop all your nonsense, all your fears, all your anxieties, all your calculations and your plans and your future and your mortgage and your health insurance and your... All of those things are less important than the truth. So now if there is a truth and the truth is that the Creator is with you, So you can risk it all. So you don't need to be worried anymore. So you cannot allow yourself to be scared every second. Every end of the month, every argument, every rebuke is insulting you, hurting your feelings. Deal with reality already. Take the rebuke already. (coughs) Do tshuva finally. Come back to the truth and fix yourself. Stop blaming others all of the time. Blaming your parents, blaming your friends, blaming your, your, your mate, blaming your children, blaming the banks, blaming your boss. Stop it. Listen. There is no one except of the Creator, and He is talking to you. And He's with you day and night. 
When I'm closing my eyes, I see movies that in Hollywood, they still haven't wrote those scripts. They never wrote visions like I see when I'm going, to, I can't go to sleep. My wife don't understand. She's asking me, where you have powers from? You, I'm falling asleep at four. I'm waking up already. I, I don't know what's going on with me. I'm trying to go to sleep. I'm closing my eyes. I see movies. I see the redemption. I see resurrection of the dead. I see people are waking up. I see souls. I see things. I, I don't know how to hold back from what that happens in the back of my mind. And I'm asking myself, are you crazy? And there is only one thing that I know for sure about myself, that in every situation in my life, 24-7, in every moment of my life, I'm always, always, always trying to do the best that I can, no matter in which situation that I'm at. I don't care. In the morning, I'm washing the dishes from yesterday. When my children needs my help, I'm going and doing that. I'm cleaning the floor. I'm helping. If I can learn something, I'm learning. If my wife, she needs to talk to me, I'm talking to her. If there's nothing else to do, I need to check hundreds of messages that I'm receiving daily on my WhatsApp and I need to answer and I'm answering, answering. And if one something moves and I need to do, I'm dropping the phone and I'm going and doing this. And I, I'm working 24 hours a day. When I'm going to sleep, I'm going to work on certain things with my mind while I'm sleeping. I don't go to sleep. And it's not because I'm an angel. It's only because that there is something real going on in this world. And from the moment, and I'm telling you the truth, in the beginning of my journey of coming closer to Hashem, I was not in the place that I'm holding today. No doubt about it. My mind was much more distracted. I was thinking about a lot of other things. Many things that connected to purity and holiness were very, very far from me and I couldn't understand them and I was not related to them and Torah was not in the, the center of my mind and verses were, were not crossing my thoughts every second. I was very different, but from the moment that I realized as a person that there is a creator, that moment, that clarification took my life from one place to the other. So it's true. It takes 42 hours to drive if you're not stopping from California, Los Angeles to New York, Monsi. It's true. It's hard. It's 42 hours drive. And if you want to fill some gas or another half an hour, another half an hour. So we did it in 52 hours drive. There is time that takes for that distance to happen. You cannot jump from here to there unless Hashem takes you, jumping you above the way, above the land, above time, and suddenly you can find yourself great. Wonderful, amazing. But we had to deal with a flat tire seven hours before reaching New York in the middle of the night in the highway. So it took another one hour and a half and a half in the middle of the freezing cold. So what can a person do? It takes time. So even for me, it took time from the beginning of my journey to that place that I'm holding today. It took me a lot of effort and many changes took place in my life during that journey. But when I went out from Los Angeles, I was already on my way to New York. When I started my tshuva process something like 20 years ago, I was already on the way to the place that I will finish my journey at. I didn't know it, but I went out. In the moment that the Creator broke my illusion of living life in a fake world of needs, of fears, of lusts, of desires, of, of being selfish, from the moment that he revealed to me that life got something more to it than only my needs or, or my fears, I changed my life completely. That clarification took my life to a different place. And I was so committed to it that I decided to do tshuva. And to come closer to Hashem, even though that I didn't even know, didn't even realize what it's all about. 
When I heard that I'm going to have to be religious to do that, I was crying. I didn't want that. It was such a radical change for me. I had to fight with all of my family, all of the relationships I had with friends from the past. They're all broken. None of the people that were friends of mine in the past are my friends today. None of them were able to deal with the truth, with the, with the responsibility that I took upon myself when I was 19 years old. Because I decided to break every, every old pattern that I had in my mind. I was refusing to surrender to my fears. I had one friend that I know that I really hurt that person. And immediately when I realized that I was lying to him, after understanding that I need to search for the truth, I went and met and confronted that person and I opened my heart to him and I told him, listen, I was wrong and I did to you A and B and C and I messed up and I'm sorry. And it was the worst thing that I could do for myself in those days. It was, it, it was to destroy myself. It was something that I wouldn't do. And for the evidence for that, for two years I was holding that secret inside of myself and I didn't say it before. But when I realized that there is a divine truth, that there is a truth that is higher than my fears, than my needs, so immediately I sacrificed my pride and I went all the way and I told him everything without hiding anything and I just expressed the truth because it was higher than me and I was obligating myself to it. The Creator was not obligating me. The Creator only shown the opportunity, the option of committing yourself to the good, of handing yourself, your life out to Hashem, back to Hashem, revealing with your own effort the truth that is hidden inside of you. It's the mission of our lives and we must take it. Think about King David. What was the moment, the changing point in the life of King David? It was that moment that he'd been rebuked by the prophet on his mistake with Bathsheba and with her husband. And King David was over there alone with the prophet. He was able to walk away. He was able to execute that prophet. He was able to erase that sin, that mistake from the books. He was very, very powerful in that moment. But he chose to walk alone and to deal with the truth. And the truth for him was a risk to lose his kingship, was a, a, a risk to lose all of his honor, all of his success, all of, all of the treasures, every kind of power that he was holding by admitting that he messed up so much he was risking all of his security and all of his wealth, all of his life success. And he did it for the truth. And in that moment, a voice came out of heaven because that he did tshuva, because that he admitted, because that he forced himself to say the truth. And he said, I messed up. I need to be executed on my sin. He admitted and he accepted the punishment that he was deserved by his understanding, by his understanding on the rules, by the Jewish rules, by the halacha. He accepted on himself to die for Hashem on his mistake. In that moment, the complete opposite thing happened. A voice came out of heaven and declared that King David now became the fourth will of the holy chariot of the Creator. Means that he is in a higher level than Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is higher than them. By what? By admitting, saying the truth. He became the first Baal Tshuva in all the generations that did Tshuva as an individual and not as a public. He became to be the first person that carved, that opened that route, that path for us today to learn that the Creator can forgive you 
as an individual and not as part of the public. And now we should walk in his path. And if we will walk in that path, we will become even higher than our ancestors. And if you're doubting that, you're doubting yourself. And you're doubting the mercy and the kindness of the Creator. And you don't realize how generous and wide and big and great the Creator is. And how much He is ready and value, value and, and av av available for you. How much He is willing to help you. How much He doesn't have anything in His life, the Almighty. He doesn't have anything in His life except of helping you in your needs. So why is he holding the horses back? So why I can't see the money? So why I can't see my success? Why I'm not married yet? Why I don't have children yet? Why I haven't bought that house yet? Why, why, why? All of those questions are coming because you are not fulfilling your part in your relationship with the Creator. In the moment that you will take responsibility on what that He is asking you to do in life, means to be brave, to be strong, not to fall to those sadnesses, not to drink so much, not to eat so much. You will listen to your inner voice, not going to follow the books, not going to run after rabbis to commit you and tell you what to do. Going to listen to the voice of supervision of the Creator that lives with you, with you in your houses, sleeps with you in your bed, eating with you on your dining table, hiding with you when you're scared, running with you when you're happy, joining and, and joining you whenever you celebrate. When you go out, He goes out with you. When you come in, He comes in with you. His angels are walking in front of you, with you, inside your camp. He lives inside of your heart, inside of your mind, inside of your brain. He's talking to you through all of the mouths and all the people. And everyone that are surrounding you are just coverings of His godliness and showing Himself to you in every moment of your life. And yes, it's scary. That's godliness. And there is nothing except of Him in your life. And you're also only part of heaven from above. Who are you? If not a revealing of the truth, a revolution, a light of the Creator that came down to the world and reveals the treasures that He planted inside of you. And He treasured some sparks in you and some sparks in you and some sparks in you and in me. And every one of us got some sparks in us that we must uncover. We must reveal them out to the world that people will enjoy the treasures of Hashem, the treasures of the Creator. So you must fight with your fears. You must go against the stream. You must make a revolution in the world. If you think that the world will be redeemed by one person, you're dreaming. One person can be the strongest one in the world, you're right, so he will have the merit to be redeemed. But why that you're going to be redeemed because of him? Why? It's not fair. You're eating like an animal, you're sleeping like, like, like a mule, you're fighting like a, like a, like a, a cheetah. You're cheating your wife, you're breaking and violating the rules, and you want to be redeemed because that Mashiach came? Who are you? What, what do you think that goes on here in this world? There is a real justice system that runs the world. You think that you're going to be redeemed eating like an animal, sleeping like an animal, talking like an animal, and everything will be open for you? Why? Why do you think that it's supposed to be like that? Why you think that Mashiach will suffer for you and you will, with your Dunkin' Donuts, gonna go and celebrate in Beit HaMikdash? Why? Why? It's not fair. We all need to carry that yoke. We all need to work together. We must cooperate. We must be a positive community that goes out to the world and spreads the light and making a real change. So you had it with Yeshiva, so you need to be that guy that will go and fight against those rabbis that are molested and abusing children in Yeshivot. And if you've been destroyed by the banks, so you need to go and to fight and make big noise if it's on Facebook, if it's on Twitter, if it's on Instagram, if it's in fake news, I don't know what you should do. Do whatever it takes to make a change. 
And if you've been destroyed by the government, by the police, by the parents system, by the Rabbanut system, by I don't know what, by the television, by filthy movies, so you need to go and fight against it and to scream your scream that in your circles people will hear your scream. Because if you're going to shut your mouth, no one's going to hear you. And you won't give a hand to all of those people that are drowning around you. And it's not fair. Because they're drowning. So how can you let them drown? It's not fair. But while you let yourself be so lazy and sad, and who am I? I don't have the power to do that. But you have the power to do something else. Some things you are able to do. So why won't you do that? Why won't you use the powers and the talents that you do have and go and make a change in the world? Today, I'm speaking to 50,000 people every month. Who am I? Who do you think I am? You think that money brought me to that place? You think that my talent brought me to that place? I was talking to people from the beginning of my journey. When I was learning in yeshiva, I was not holding an iPhone, I was not recording, I was not teaching, I was not doing anything like that. But every day, when I was waking up in the morning, I would drive for half an hour to take a friend that was not able to drag himself out of bed by himself and I would put him in my car and then I would drive with him to the yeshiva and all day long I was learning with him together and I was achieving one third of the amount that I was learning before without him. Why? Because I cared about him. And when a friend of mine called me while I was in those beginning first years of my tshuva and told me I don't have money, I don't know what to do, I told him, listen, come, learn with me. I'm going to make sure that you're going to be paid, that you're going to have a payroll. He said, how much are you going to pay? I was receiving 1,800 shekels a month. That was my payroll. It's not even half of the rent that I was paying in those days. It wasn't even half. That was my payroll. I told him, they're going to give you 5,000. He said, how? I told him, don't worry, I have my ways. You know what I was doing? I went to all of my friends, to every person that I knew around me, and I committed all of my friends to give 50 shekels a month and another 100 shekels a month. And I was collecting from all of those people their commitment to give until I came with a check to that friend. And I told him, here, that's your check. And for months on months on months, I was making sure that he will receive that check. And he was not supposed to receive it. I was wasting my days and my nights and my hours and my sleep and my learning hours to go and to rescue him and to rescue him and to rescue him. A few days ago, I received a text message from a friend from Israel, a person that was about to kill himself maybe 30 times. I saved his life. He was taking medicines for his health condition. He had very, very abusive parents. He was suffering bad, bad, bad time in his life. He tried to commit suicide many times. I made sure that that person will come to my house on daily basis and will eat on my Shabbos table every Shabbat, three meals, and every Purim we would come to his house and we tried to, and we helped him to rent a place. And in the end, he rent a place in our street. And I was going with him to that hostel that he was staying at. And I was helping him and taking care of him. I received a text from him a few days ago that he is now volunteering in, in, a, in, a, in a mental house, in a, in a, in a how you say, pneumia, like dormitory. a dormitory for people with mental issues and suicidal. And he's volunteering over there. And he said that in the interview, when the, the manager over there interviewed him, he said, I was praising you. I told him about you. Because when he was um, 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 vulnerable, when he was in those places, I went and I drove to visit him and I was talking to him and texting him and messaging him and, and calling him all, all of the time for years. For years I was giving from my, 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 for my time, for my life. And this is how in the end of the day, one day when they decided to open an English program in the yeshiva that I was learning, they chose me. I didn't know how to speak English. You, you're going to think I'm crazy. 
watch my videos from seven, eight, nine years ago in our YouTube channel and our website. Go to the first five, ten ones. You're going to laugh. You're going to see an Israeli person that doesn't have a clue how to speak English asking like now that I'm asking you. So now I'm asking twice a class. It's twice in a class. How you say this? How you say that? In those days, every two sentences I had to ask, how you say that? How you say that? How you say that? How you say... Watch the videos. Thank God it's all online. First videos of mine talking. I didn't know how to speak your language. Thank God. But I had to learn it. I made a joke once. I said I'm the only person in the universe that is learning English, the Shem Shamayim, only for Hashem. Everyone, they want them to have a green card. They need to have a job. They want they're learning English. They want to work. They want to travel. I was learning English because I had people that needed help and there was no one to spend time with them. And there were English speakers that couldn't understand the language. They couldn't enjoy and enter classes in Hebrew. So I was translating the classes to them in my broken English without knowing English. Only with what that I catch from silly movies that I watched in my childhood. And I was breaking my teeth to teach them. And that's how I opened an English program. And that English program in the beginning was three people and then seven people. And in the end, 50 people would push themselves to that tiny room. And then I realized that I have my own mission. So I went out from the yeshiva, like I told you that I spoke with Rav Arush, And I told him, listen, that's the end of it. I need to go on my own. And he blessed me and I went. And I went and I opened the first center in, in Jerusalem, Emuna Center. Today we have five centers in the U.S. Why? Because Hashem saw the effort. So I reached that place that today I'm speaking to 50,000 people every month. Why? Because I'm talented? No. Because I, I gave my guts, because I, I, I was ready to sacrifice. When I was finishing, I don't know if you can believe even what that I'm telling you. When I was finishing my day after helping my wife to put the kids to sleep and whatever, as much as I could, she was doing many things on her own, for sure. Many, many things she was doing. She's a real hero. But when I was finishing the day with them, helping and finishing and learning and whatever that I had to do, and also making sure to have enough money at 12, at the middle of the night, I would go out of the house to do another three, four hours it would do. And I would drive and I would come early in the morning dead with no power and starting another day like nothing happened. My children are going to tell you, my wife is going to tell you, the 50,000 views that we have every month are going to tell you. That I was sacrificing myself for that cause. And that's why it's happening today. So why is it not happening in your lives? Because you're not listening yet to the voice of Hashem that is telling you to do. What do I mean? Simple things. Not high things, not Kabbalah, not in the peak of the world. Simple things. In a certain moment while you're eating, you feel that you ate enough that's the time to put down the fork, even if your plate is still half full. To listen to yourself, to your inner voice, it's to put down the fork and not to eat anymore. And if you see that it's taking you to bad places, so you should eat more, but you should do tshuva on that. You should talk with Hashem about it and tell Him, listen, I heard that voice. I felt that I was eating too much, but I cannot stop myself. It's too hard. Please give me the power to deal with my desires and help me not to eat more than I should. Great. If you are talking, you're having a conversation with a person, and now you feel that you're about to lie, you feel that you're trying to please him, you feel that you're trying to make him love you, like you, whatever, you feel threatened by him, that's the time to break that nature of your fears, of you trying to make other people like you. And you need to stop that conversation. You need to go back to who that you are and to be honest 
and not to try to please him and not to tell silly jokes that you don't feel complete with and not to try to make other people happy or, or laughing. You need to control yourself and to say to yourself, I don't need to pretend that I'm someone else. If I'm not enjoying in this evening, if I don't enjoy spending time in that company, don't go there anymore. If someone is threatening you, like a person told me today, someone is telling him, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to take everything from you. I told him, go kill him. <laughs> destroy him. Not literally kill him. Go fight with him. Who is he to terrorize you? Oh, he's a rabbi. So what? So what if he's a rabbi? He's a judge. He's a police officer. So what? So he, what are you going to do? He's going to kill you? So you're going to die? So die. So die as a warrior. So what? So fight for your truth. So what if he's a rabbi? So what if she's a rabbitson? So what if she's a teacher? If she's the main teacher of your school, she's the principal. So what? It gives her the permission to destroy young children? To destroy young boys? To destroy parents? To destroy families? To destroy you as a person? Because he's richer than you? Because, because he's more years in that company than you? Throw the table to his face and walk home. Naked. With no penny in your pockets. And tell Hashem, you know Hashem, today I gave up everything for you. And then you will start seeing miracles in your life. By being who that you are, why that you gonna let someone molested you? Why you gonna let someone destroy you? For what? Because he's your father? Does your father have in the Bible the permission, hey, don't go and kill no one? I was not kidding, but I was not that serious. Come back, come back. <laughs> I was not kidding, but I was not that serious. It doesn't written that your father allows to destroy you. Okay, you don't want to fight with your father? So go. So walk away. Abram was commanded to walk away from his parents' house. Lech lecha mi bet avicha. Go from the, father of, the house of your father. Okay, where am I going to go? To the land that I'm going to show you. What? To the unknown? Yes. To the desert? Yes. Don't be so scared. What's going to happen to you? You're going to be beaten. Someone's going to slap your face. Someone's going to scream at you. Someone's going to insult you. What won't you have? What, you're going to die from hunger? What do you think that's going to happen to you? Nothing going to happen to you. Only your fear is going to threaten on you. You won't have where to sleep. You won't have where to eat. They're going to reject you. They're going to excommunicate you. Let them do whatever they want. Who are they? Who are they? Bunch of liars? Bunch of cowards. People that are threatening you are the people that are scared of you. Who are they to destroy your self-esteem? Are you clay in their hands? Are you their creation? That they gonna make you? That they gonna force you? Who are they? Criminals. Why you respect criminals? Because they have titles? Because they have names, because someone is calling him the rabbi, because someone is bowing to him and flattering him, because he got money, because the people rather to follow him instead of following the truth. So I don't mind to stay alone and to fight my war. I did it when I was a loner. I started it when I was alone. I'm just inviting you and calling you to make a stand and to start opening your mouths in your houses, in your areas, in your communities. Or else you're going to stay in your own darkness and you're going to keep suffering. That's the only thing. I cannot come to your house and fight for you with your parents. I cannot come to your community and argue with the rabbi. I cannot. I don't have the physical ability to do it. Emotionally, I'm with you. In my heart, 100% I'm with you. I'm walking in front of the camp. I was there already. I prepared the, 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 the place for you. I promise you, I'm praying for you. I'm helping you, I'm backing you up. 
I cannot knock on all the doors of all the communities, all the synagogues, and to, to bang the table in Mincha time in all the synagogues. In, I cannot do it. I can do it online. I can scream to you that you should scream. First of all, you should scream at yourselves. Why am I not screaming? Why am I allowing this silly, illusionary world to destroy my self-esteem and to shut my mouth? Why am I allowing people to play with my mind? Why am I allowing people to control my decisions? To choose my profession, to choose my career, to choose my, my soulmate, to choose my, my place of living, to choose the hours that I'm going to wake up, to choose my outfit. Why did someone going to choose my outfit? Why did just, I will dress up because that someone thinks that that's the proper way? That's sick. That's crazy. You're afraid to be excommunicated from your community? That's not a worthy community to be joined to in the first place. If they're going to kick you out from the synagogue because of your outfit, I'm not coming to pray there with you, I promise you. If I'm going to hear that in that synagogue they're not allowing someone in, I'm not praying in that shul. I'm not coming. Warn me. I'm not coming to that crazy place. They're not going to let your children learn in that school? Congratulations. You saved your children from learning under demons and ghosts for the rest of their lives. Do you know what it means to learn from people that are judging other people by their look and not having mercy and love on all of their students? It's better to homeschool your children, but I cannot teach them as many hours. Okay, so teach them less. But I need to do other things. Okay, so take your children with you. You want a solution? Go scream to Hashem like that I'm screaming to Hashem. I cannot tell you that I have a solution for you. I'm not claiming to have a solution for you. But to see you shutting your own mouths and not expressing your truth and not defending yourselves is crazy in my eyes. I don't get it. How come you're going to let someone destroy your self-esteem on a daily basis? Why that you're going to let someone do that? Questioning yourself and doubting yourself and erase, erasing your, 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 your real um, identity for someone that really doesn't care about you. I have a friend, a good friend. His parents are millionaires. They're so wealthy, they're so rich, and the person is broke. The person doesn't have the ability to pay his own rent. And his parents are, how do you say, disgustingly, you can say that, rich. Ridiculous situation. He's not asking them for money. But he will go to eat with them for Pesach. He will respect them in the holidays. He will bring his children once in two weeks to visit his parents. He will play the game, but he will not gonna ask them for money. You know what I would do? Don't listen to me. Don't follow me. I would do one out of two things or that I would do the first and then the second. First of all, I would break my parents' door. Breaking into their house and destroying their house. That's what I would do. And then I wouldn't talk to them ever again. That's if you're asking me. You don't have to follow me. You can do something else. I don't mind. Your father can give you your rent. He doesn't. He chooses not to give you your rent. And not because you're lazy. He's not drug addicted. He's not an alcoholic. It's a working person. His wife, she's working. Their children are learning. But they need to pay tuition in the U.S., in New York, in the best schools. So what do you want? He needs to live in a normal, decent environment, neighborhood. Okay, so you need to pay. And he cannot cover those expenses. There is only one thing to do. Go and explain your parents that you need help. Why don't you do that? Because they 
educated you very well not to knock on their door when they're sleeping in the afternoon and not to interrupt when they're talking and not to argue and never to answer and not to talk in front of your parents and who are you and they were breaking your self-esteem from the moment that you were so tiny and they just designed you to the right size that it's comfortable for them to have you even if you're 30 if you're 40 if you're 50 okay 50 you're still a child for me you're a child very comfortable very comfortable it's called Pokemon now it's a Pokemon sick that's a sick world so you don't need to flow with that sickness you don't need to cooperate with filthy systems with impure systems with contaminated rules. They were not educating him how to build himself and how to take care of his family. They were teaching him how not to interrupt them. They have houses, they have properties, they have fortunes, and they're not giving. So he should accept it. Great. If I need to accept it, I need to accept that I need to go on my own. I need to accept that I don't have parents that cares about me. So if I don't have parents that cares about me, why that I'm going to care about them? To respect them? What do you mean to respect them? Because the Torah is saying to respect them. If I need to respect them, so the best way for me to respect them is to walk away from them. That will be the best respect in the world. I'm not going to insult them. I'm not going to rebuke them. I'm not going to tell them anything. I'm just going to walk away and minding my own business. And I'm going to be free and happy. And not broken to pieces, to shreds. With low self-esteem. Insulted and humiliated on a daily basis. Not from your boss, not from your parents, not from your friends, not from no one in the world. From your rabbi in your community? That he gonna disgrace you? Is that a worthy rabbi? So if he's not a worthy rabbi, why are you scared of him? Because other people are calling him rabbi? If he's not a worthy rabbi that is running for his community and making peace between them and helping them and doing the best that he can. Doesn't need to pay the rent for all of his people, but at least to try, at least to want, at least to show that he cares. If he's not doing that, he's not a rabbi. He's an evil person that possessed, that took control on, on the respect and honor of Hashem's communities. On the innocent um, sheep of, 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 of the highest shepherd of them all. Who is he? A thief, a robber, someone that steals the money of the community. That's someone to respect, to be afraid of, to be afraid of a human being. It's an obligation that's written in the Bible. You're not allowed to be afraid of no man. It's a mitzvah midoraita. It's an obligation by the Bible. Like you should put fill in, like you should keep Shabbat. You're not allowed to eat pork. You're not allowed to eat shrimp. You're not allowed to be afraid of people. It's in the same place. Same level of obligation. Not to be terrorized by people. What can they do to you? They tried to excommunicate King David. I saw only good happen to him because of that. He ran to the forests, he ran to the desert, he ran to the Creator. He went and he cried, and he was begging, and he was calling him from the depths of his heart. And he was not backing off from the truth. That's how he became King David. Not because he was eating from gold and silverwares, no. Because he was puking and bleeding and crying and screaming his guts out on the sorrow of his people, on lack of justice, on evilty, on cruelty. He went and he was praying. He went and he was calling Hashem. You want to walk in his path? You need to be a warrior. You need to be a soldier. 
You don't need no one to drift you, to join you to the army. Hey, come, join the army. No, you need to decide. I'm going to be a commander. First of all, I'm going to control myself. First of all, I'm going to walk in the straight path under the real guidings of Hashem. First of all, before that, I'm going to learn how to put filin and how to keep Shabbat. I'm never going to lie ever again. Once I was in a wedding, I was such a fresh Baal Tshuva. In the beginning, beginning, a family member of my wife's, we went to, to his wedding, and, and one of the family over there, he was religious, and he really liked me because I was like a fresh, excited uh, Baal Tshuva. He was so happy to see me. So while, while we, we, we were talking in the wedding, so I told him, listen, Let's take something upon ourselves. Let's, let's take something. So he told me, okay, let's do it. What do you suggest? I told him, let's never lie ever again. He never spoke to me from that day ever again. <laughs> he decided that, he said, I think it's going to be too hard. And he was not even able to smile to me in, the, in different occasions that he saw me later. But if you're going to see how I'm being rebuked and how I'm being ashamed and how I'm being destroyed at once in a while and I'm not answering back ever and I'm listening to the rebuke, I'm listening, you, you would be amazed. I'm sitting and I'm listening carefully to every word that is being said to me by the most rude person in the world that's going to disgrace me, first of all, I'm listening. Thirsty, I'm listening to every word that he has to say. Every single word I want to hear, what the Shem is telling me now. And then I'm going to choose. If that person is ungrateful, and it's someone that is disgusting, and he's talking filthy, and he's ungrateful after all the favors that I did to him, I will tell him, you know what, you're right, and I'm going to walk away. And I'm never going to speak with him ever again. But if I'm going to see that that person just shared his sorrow, and he was right in what that he was saying to me, I will apologize to him. I will justify him. I will explain to him why I was wrong, and where my problem begins, and I will be his best friend forever. And I will never going to be insulted by his rebuke because I'm a person that wants to learn. So I don't care how the information is being transferred. If you want to learn, so learn. The rebukes can come from your boss, can come from your parents, can come from your wife, can come from your husband, can come from your children, can come from reality. It doesn't matter. If you want to learn, you have an opportunity to learn every second of your life. And if you don't want to learn, so you don't want to learn. So, I'm calling you to learn and to improve yourselves and to work on your own self-esteem and not, don't let no one destroy your, your, your essence, who that you are, your identity. You are who that Hashem made you to be. Hashem is responsible for who that you are. You don't need to justify anything. You don't need to please no one. Not on how that you look, not on how that you sound, not on how that you be. You, you just need to be the best that you can. And to go with that all the way, against all waves, against all winds, all powers of nature. Dead fish are swimming with the stream because they're dead. The stream is taking them. Live fish are always swimming against the stream, always finding their way, always swimming, always battling, always fighting, always achieving. They have goals, new goals. Every second they have another idea, another thought. You're alive. You're alive. So you're thinking. So you have opinions, so you're negotiating, so you're consulting, so you're thinking, so you're talking, so you're asking, so you're being answered. You're alive. When you're letting yourself being shut off, you're dead. Whew. Working, 9 till 5, 
going home, eating, going to sleep, waking up in the morning, working, dying, flowing. It can't be you. It can't be that that's the real you. You are a life creation. You're someone to admire. You're someone to learn from. You're someone that has a lot to give. So give from who that you really are, from the qualities of your spirit, of your soul. And when you're going to believe in yourself, people are going to start growing and blooming around you and they're going to enjoy the fruits of your labor and they're going to develop by themselves and you're going to experience, you're going to see them growing in front of your eyes and they're going to be the fruits of your actions. Because the water that you're going to bring into yourself is going to water your circles, your surroundings, and everyone will grow around you. But not when you're going to try to flatter them and to apologize and to erase yourself for them. That's not the respect of your parents that you're going to erase yourself. Only that you're going to grow and be strong and healthy and wealthy and powerful and wise, and generous, and kind, and nice to people, to everyone. That's the respect for your parents. If you live in their neighborhood, or if you live in a different state, that's not important at all. What it is important is that you're going to present Hashem in His world in a proper way. That you're going to represent justice, and truth, and loyalty, and dignity, and all good attributes, that you're going to be an ambassador of the Torah, not of rabbis or communities or people. Be a messenger of the truth. Say the truth. Don't lie. Be honest. Don't be scared. Don't be a coward. Don't bury yourself when you're alive. Live. Thank you very much. Small announcement. A MUNA project, non-profit organization, we're asking for your support. Help us. We're helping thousands of people, spiritually and financially. We're supporting many families. We're doing a lot of things in the world. We're trying to print more books, more CDs. We want to reach out to as many souls as we can. Your donation counts. $18, $36, $100, $1 dollars as much as you can, give and you will see wonders by the merit of your generosity. The Creator will answer to all of your prayers and requests in those days of Purim and in every day of your life. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. If you enjoyed this video very much, please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.